Keith has chosen a scenic route near his hometown in County Clare. Loch Derg on the Shannon River is one of Ireland's largest lakes. It's 40 kilometres long from Port Amna in County Galway to Killaloo in County Clare. In its time, Loch Derg would have been a thriving highway for ships and cargo boats. But now its towns, which fringe the lake, are boating and fishing destinations. Starting in Mount Shannon, Keith will journey down the western side of Loch Derg. On his way, he will visit Holy Island and will then travel by canoe to Raheen Woods in Dume Graney, following which he will walk the Ballycogarin Loop and from there take a boat into Killaloo to visit Brian Baru's fort, Bale Baru. So my gear for the journey today, a map, of course, mobile phone, just in case, sun cream for the old bald buns, water, flask, uh, and I have to say, on a lot of my travels, a book I've had since I was 12 years of age, Gordon Darcy's Birds of Ireland. And something else that I always get slagged for, but I bring everywhere with me, is my wooden stick. It takes me everywhere. Keith's first guide today is Ger Madden, who is the author of many books and also an expert guide on the history of Holy Island, which is also known as Inish Kaltra. So how are you doing? Great to see you. Are you well? Excellent. What do I need for this trip? We want the life jacket anyway. Brilliant. There we go. Lovely. Perfect. It's one kilometer from the mainland to the island, but sometimes Loch Derg can be a bit choppy. The wind, the wind is, is pretty strong today. It is very strong. And you're always involved in the heritage of this area. Oh, yes. What fuck the year this was, no. Sure, yeah. do you go out to the island very often? Practically every day from April to the end of September. Weather, weather permitting. And how high do the, the waves get up here? I've seen it four or five feet high. But you stay off the, the lake when the, you see the white heads on the, on the waves. We're going to get drenched. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are, Ger. So this is the old, the old pilgrim path. Just indeed. You'll, you'll be classed now as a pilgrim today with your stick. There you go. You like it? This is a beautiful stick. There's one exact <laughs> copy of it above on a, a high cross. So what are we going to see here? Well, it's a very complex early church site. There's a ring fort going back to the Iron Age. There are 8th century grave markers, 10th century high crosses, a round tower, the ruins of six churches. The site is in extraordinary pristine condition, isn't it? It's probably one of the best preserved sites in the whole country. And like most of, most of the buildings and that have been preserved. That's an amazing view. You suddenly come up to the edge of this hill and you can actually see the church. How old is the um, tower, Ger? It was built during the reign of Brian Baru when he was High King of Ireland, 1002 to 1014. And Killaloo was the capital of Ireland. Indeed. Indeed, aye, yes. They were the good days. Any monastic site, there's any wildly important ones, there is a, a round tower on them. And they're a status thing, I think, more than anything else. That tower is about 30 metres high at the moment, in perfect condition. The top story is missing and the capstone roof. So there is a legend that a, while the stone mason was pushing the roof on it, a red-headed woman passed by and she never said Balo Iyer and Ober, God bless the work. So he threw his hammer at her and she's supposed to be metamorphosed into a stone there still standing beside the tower. But I'd say it was struck by lightning at some stage. The church the, the, beside it there, St. Cayman's Church, that was also built by Brian Baru. And his brother Markham was the abbot here. He died here in 1008. So it was during that period, 10, between 1000 and 1015, that all the main stone buildings that you see today were started, at least started, and because of, because of the patronage of Brian. And we've got friends with us. We've a couple of families of nesting swallows up there, so we'll hear them chirping in the background. This is St. Cayman's Church. Some of, some of the best preserved 
five crosses. They're part of a huge collection of something like 128 altogether. One of the most famous crosses is this one here. This is the cross of Carsock. And on the side of the, the cross is written here, Order Carsock, Ord Senor Erden. We're almost sure that it's the first time the Irish for Ireland has been written in stone. This is probably the oldest cross on the, in the, on the island. The centre part and the bottom portion of it is, is outside in the, beside the round tower. On this side, you have an old ancestor of yours, I would think. He has a typical pilgrim staff, and he does look a bit like you as well, so. Whereas I think I saw in, in that booklet of yours, I think we saw... There's, there's a drawing of it there. There is a drawing of it. Yeah. Um, I thought you were looking at me a bit funny, all right, while you ran. It's like a caricature of me, anyway, with a big bald head in it. Now I'm bringing you to the most important part of the whole monastery, monastic system. It's the Saints graveyard. It's unique in Europe because they have never, never been disturbed in over a thousand years. Holy Island's undisturbed location is a favourite spot to see rare birds. You, you haven't one, no? No. I never fully got my head around the idea of getting a boat. You will eventually. Uh, thank you, Ger. All the best now. Bye-bye. Keith Wood promised us that he was going to have his first kayak lesson with Mike Jones. How are you doing? Great. The sun is shining. Why wouldn't I be? Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. Yeah. Now, I want to bring everything I have with me. Can it all fit in the yeah. boat? Yeah, perfect. So let's Excellent. get your stuff packed in, and then we'll get you dressed. I think so, that fits in there fine. I think that's going to fit in there just like that. Look at that. I am going to try and kayak for the first time. I've never done it. Um, I'd be a little bit awkward, I have to say. OK, so we're going to put your boat a little bit further down, Keith. I have no real concerns about it. I know that water is wet. I'm just looking forward to seeing it from a vantage point. Now, slide yourself in there. As I slide you in, it's going to be a little wobble at the end. Um, and I'll just give you a last little shove out then. I'm going to point you in the right direction, and you're away. This should be interesting. Going to catch up with me, Mike. I'm getting cocky. It's going to be a bit tricky at the start here, but we'll start to get a bit of shelter around the corner. Not too bad for a beginner. No, we'll get there. We'll get a little bit of the way. Only a few miles to go. Not exactly my natural habitat, <laughs> no. it has to be said. <laughs> Glockdurg is a huge lake, but it isn't overused, and there is solitude to be found on the lake into the calm waters of the River Scariff, which connects Loch Derg to Tune Graney. Keith has mastered the art of kayaking. Uh, that was a good stretch out now. Well, almost. Now, so I'm going to jump out first, and then I'll give you a hand getting out. Two hands, and then onto the wall. <laughs> Just to stop. <laughs> 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 Up again. Elegantly done. <laughs>